Do you guys remember this deadly sensei from Okinawa? Whoa! Well, spending just two hours with him last year was already enough to get me beaten up. But this year, I'm just stupid enough to go back to him again for seven days now. So here I am in Nago, Okinawa for the third season of Yusuke in Okinawa. The main goal of this trip is going to be taking away 10 karate tips that's going to elevate your karate to the next level. Well, to be honest, yes, I am feeling a little bit uh, anxious about this. You know, you never know if the sensei is going to be 100% pleased uh, with your technique. But you know, the most important point is to stay open-minded and to always be seeking for new things to learn. So I'm very looking forward to going to my first lesson, which is happening in, uh, I think, two hours. So I'm gonna go back to the hotel get myself mentally and physically ready, you know, get those dogies nice and clean, and let's head over to the dojo. I'll see you guys there. I guess, yeah, I thought it was gonna be interesting to show you guys uh, where I was staying. So it's called Haibisu Yabu. It's like a hostel, I guess, or I guess the owner has um, made uh, the second floor into a hostel-ish kind of place. So it was actually self-check-in, and what surprised me the most was this key box like I didn't know how to check in but the thing is you just gotta um, open here and then the key was just hung in here so I guess you can see how safe uh, the island or I guess how safe this part of the uh, island is the fee for this place was extremely affordable um, I think per night it was 5,000 around 5,000 Japanese yen with a nice outdoor space with some Banksy art <laughs> Um, I'm staying in the room uh, 201 right here. Yeah, so it's it's really, um, it is a hot um, time of the year. It's still April, but the temperature is around 25 today. But when you go into the shades, um, it's not that bad. So what am I here? So as you can see, it's a pretty nice hallway first. And then this is the living room space, like this. It has a decent sized kitchen, sofa, TV, water, fridge, and then it has a, you know, a place to wash your hands and everything. It has a washing machine and a dryer machine. That's, you know, that's really good. And then bathroom and a shower. It's really, um, you know, Japanese households in general have a huge bathtub, but not so much in Okinawa. This is pretty rare to see. Surprisingly, there are, I think there were three beds. I'm only gonna be using one, but um, look, one, two, three. So, you know, it's a pretty spacious, I would say, how do you call this? Hostel, hotel, um, guest house. And the, the setting for this space is a bit odd because I'll be doing my um, online lessons as well during this trip. So I'm gonna be placing it like this. I'll be doing my lessons uh, like this. So yeah, um, now I'm gonna get changed and head over to the dojo. Guys, I, was, I just went out to get some groceries, um, banana and oranges. And then a lady, she just gave me a tomato. Like how, how nice is that? She, she said she grew it out on, the, on her backyard and she just handed it over to me. So <laughs> I guess that's the culture of Okinawa. Let's get to the trading. <laughs> So yeah, I'm now excited. This is Higa Sensei from Shuri Shorin Ryu. He's basically going to be my sensei and my mentor for the next seven days. So we started off from a basic warm-up drill and some stretches. The first lesson I learned from Higa Sensei was on how to power up your punches. Take a look at this clip. だいぶ変わってきたな。ありがとうございます。結構こっちこう出し出してるさ。まあいいんだけど、段階的には肩甲骨を今使わないでさ。肩を閉じてしたのがいいと思う。今肩甲骨出てるよ、そして。はい。最
あ結構普通のジュースに行った方がいいなそのくらいでそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそ Let me explain a little bit deeper. Take a look at this car stepping on the brake suddenly. As many of you can imagine, the passengers go flying out like this. This is because the brake is accelerating the baby. By suddenly putting the brake on your punches too, the weight goes flying out to the front. As a result, you get a better impact on your knuckles. You literally can feel the weight shift inside your arm, so I heavily recommend you give it a try. So, the first lesson I learned was to make your kime at close distance first. Let's move on to the next one. During the kihom or basics practice, we worked on this combination of doing a block and then a punch. Take a look. <laughs> まあ、まあ、こう、so guys, let me explain in a little more detail. Basically, what Higa Sensei is saying is, in other words, do not rotate your hip and your arm together. Usually, a lot of people, what they do when they do a one, two, or anything with the front hand and the back hand is, they would move the hip and the arm together. Ba, 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 like this. This will be the, I would say, step one into any technique like this. However, it takes a long time and there's a gap between the first one and the second one. So, what do you do, right? The second step is, like we explained in the previous clip, to connect those two movements using your hips. To throw my first jab, I initiate the hip first. Ooh. Because the hip goes, my arm goes out. So first of all, there is a gap between the hip and the arm. Now, front hip goes out, hand goes out. However, before this hand reaches the maximum point, the hip has already charged up on the back side, okay? And the thrust of this side starts. So it is not one, but it is almost like here. Do you see how this hip is starting as my jab ends? As a result, this hip is going to pull my second punch out, resulting in this, okay? I think you can see the difference. One, two, this is the old version, new version, like this. I hope you were able to see the difference. So the second lesson I learned was to connect your two arm movements using your hips. Let's move on. Next, we moved on to footwork drills. Take a look. We did shutoke or knife hand blocks. Oizuki or jabs. And he shared this mysterious way of walking called tokage aruki or lizard walking. 
Take a look at this. Then we went on to doing Gyakuzuki or reverse punches. Now, this original footwork of Higa Sensei is super interesting. なんでこう行かったら こう、so we practice just the footwork first. Then with two punches. Then with three punches. When I try this footwork, I notice how you can continuously move while generating your maximum power. And the karate I grew up in where you take a footwork like this, it's pretty difficult to keep on moving fast while doing your techniques. You see the really, really top athletes uh, being able to pick or keep their, their fast pace and then attacking and kicking. However, it's really up there. Normal practitioners can't really do that. For other martial arts that are a little bit more closer range, like Muay Thai kickboxing and boxing, they can punch consecutively stationary in the same spot. However, while moving, that can be a little bit difficult. So I feel like this footwork allows you to be in the flow of your movement while always punching out. So through these footwork drills, I learned how to move flawlessly while generating your maximum power. The next lesson was on hip usages in a way that I've never imagined before. To watch the full day one, including four additional lessons on harder punches, faster footwork, stapler stances, and strong kicks, check out the full long video from the link in the description. And at last, we finished the practice with Nai Hanji Shodan or in Shotokan Tekki Shodan.
Guys, I am speechless. What a so energetic, just fantastic, stimulating, crazy first practice that was. Now, first of all, I was very happy that um, Sensei saw the difference in my punches and my techniques compared to my last visit, um, which was a year ago. Uh, back then, I still wasn't, well, I think I was just starting to enter the technique of relaxation and then throughout next year as I practiced at home um, I think that one of the key phrase that or the key concept that I was always uh, aiming for was making your karate movement non-karate like well, when you start karate you make everything into that rigid shape right you want to make that correct shape but when you only practice like that, then you limit yourself to only move in that way, if you know what I mean. I think the next step is making that loose and loose so that you still have the same effect. However, you are loose at the end, allowing you to continue on to the next movement. So I did a lot of practices in my online lessons too with my students to walk and punch, walk and block not using the karate footwork but just making karate techniques and everyday life thing so i'm very first i was very happy that the sensei saw the difference second point it was still difficult one big i would say point that um that really fascinated me was about the shoulder blade he told me don't put it out so much first because you're not getting that weight onto the knuckles yet so aim a little bit closer feel the impact and then try to extend that impact point little by little and that made complete sense so i still you know i just came back home actually the practice was supposed to uh start from 6 30 and end at 8 30. however um you know he was so generous that he just kept on going 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 and we ended at like, at like 9 30 ish and there were no more buses so he drove me home and I'm still in my doggy, so <laughs> I don't know what I'm speaking right now. So uh, hopefully in the next few days, um, or I guess tomorrow, I'm going to have a lesson with him again. So I'm going to try to um, organize what I've learned and deliver it to you guys as well. But this is the my live reaction right after the lesson. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed day one of Yusuke in uh, Okinawa Season 3. And I'll see you on day two.